All right, today I'm gonna to be showing you how I built this wine glass and liquor shelf with a glass top, and it starts up on the material rack, pulling down some 16 gauge one by one mild steel tube and some inch and a half by inch and a half by eighth inch thick angle iron. Now I'm gonna to have to mill the angle down, but we'll get to that. And here's a quick shot showing the difference between that hot rolled and cold rolled material. Now the first thing I wanna do is degrease this. I'm gonna be using the WD-40 Specialist Degreaser and Cleaner Easy Pods. Now this you add to a bottle of water, and as you can see on the back of the package, by using two pods instead of one, I can get a heavier concentration that'll really help just clean some of the oil and grime off of this. Because this is gonna be a patina project, I wanna start with this material clean, and I'm gonna to have to clean it multiple times throughout the project to make sure that the patina will actually be able to affect the metal. Now the cold rolled stuff is generally pr pretty clean, but because it sits in my shop for a while generally, and there's always a film of oil on metal, you always wanna make sure if you're gonna be doing a patina that you clean this stuff with a good degreaser as best you can. It's gonna help you later on, especially once the parts have been cut and welded, to get into some of those harder to reach places if you just do a quick wipe down and clean. It also just makes the whole process a little bit nicer to deal with. Now, I started by cutting this material up and breaking it down into some more manageable pieces. Uh, and this is just gonna help me kind of use this over on the bandsaw. Now I have this little trick for cutting my miters. This is gonna be a mitered frame. And what I do here is I line up the material that I need to miter and I cut that first miter in a gang cut style. So in this case, I stagger on my material. I use my little shadow line, which I shared in a other video, how to add a shadow line to a bandsaw like this. And then I can get four of those miters I can then go back, mark out my material, and then I can cut my second miter on everything. Now, I want this to be a very precise fit because it has to go in between two walls as you saw on that first shot of the shelf. If it's even a quarter inch too big, it won't fit in between the walls. And if it's too small, I won't be able to shim it. It's gonna look totally stupid if it doesn't fit perfectly. So I'm using my new Sigmund fixture table that I got a couple months ago and you can see I've got my fixture blocks in place and this perfectly sizes up this shelf for exactly the dimensions it needs to be. And you know, if you've ever used a fixture table, once you have one, you can really kind of leave your tape measure behind once you set up your initial fixture blocks. By building this shelf and knowing that it fits inside these blocks, I know that it is the right size. If it doesn't fit, then I made a mistake. As long as it fits, it's gonna be perfect. So I start by clamping everything down and tack welding one side and my outside corners, and then I can go ahead and flip it over and weld the other side. Because this is pretty light and these welds are pretty short, I don't need to be too crazy about the clamps and it is gonna wind up warping from all the other welding I need to do on it anyway. But again, keeping everything nice and tight inside those fixture blocks is super important so that I can avoid this thing breaking up the walls when I go to actually install it. I weld three sides of this frame uh, because my miters are so tight from the cut, I don't actually need to weld the inside corner. Once this gets the black patina, you'll never be able to notice that the inside corner isn't welded. And I like the look of that really square corner. Now I head over to my downdraft table and I'm using a fared flap disc to just grind down those initial welds. And I'm not using the normal a CC grind robust disc that I talk a lot about, my heavy grinding disc, because again, this is gonna be patina, so I don't wanna to go too heavy with my grinding. I'm using a CC grind strong, uh, which is basically just like a heavy flap disc that lasts a really long time. Now again, back over on my fixture table, just sort of checking everything, and then I'll start breaking down my angle. Now, like I said in the beginning of the video, this is inch and a half by inch and a half by eighth, but I need three quarter by inch and a half angle. So a very small leg on one side and then that inch and a half on the other. So in order to get that, I use my fine Versamag vise and my metal cutting circular saw to actually just rip down this angle uh, by hand. Now the shelf is only 16 inches deep. So what I did was I cut 33 or 34 inch pieces of angle so that I could get a one pair out of each pieces of angle iron. I need five pairs all together. So I just go through that process of marking out and ripping down five pieces of this angle iron so that I can then cut it in half and continue to work through the process. This was probably the most annoying part of this little job because having to rip this down and make sure everything was even uh, just took a little bit of time and effort. But I will say that metal cutting circular saw is really just the MVP of like every metal job that I do. 
it cuts this steel as though I'm cutting plywood. And the only awkward part was because of the height of this, I was kind of looking up over the top of it. But you can see those cuts came out really straight. And I basically had to do close to no tuning of this metal once it was done. The other thing I was concerned with was that the angle was going to warp when I cut that leg off, but luckily it didn't. Everything stayed nice and straight and I can continue on to cut this material up so that I can make the area that will eventually hold the wine glasses. Now I go back over to the bandsaw and what I do is I cut off the sort of non-factory edge of each of these pieces and then mark everything out with a tape measure as I go through to cut everything to the correct size. Now the shelf is going to be 16 inches but I undersize these by about a quarter of an inch so they wouldn't look awkward kind of sticking off the end. The bandsaw obviously makes quick work of this and you can see my little shadow line trick is working really well to make sure these are really nice and accurate. The hardest thing when cutting angle like this is getting a good clamp, but if, as long as you hold the material tight, it'll cut nice and straight. With everything cut, I can go over back to the downdraft table and I can start to grind this material so that I don't have to try to grind it once it's all welded up. Now you can see here I'm using a magnetic chuck to hold this metal, and this is something that I get a lot of negative comments from machinists and other people and purists on, on YouTube. This is a magnetic chuck that I bought from a scrap bin at a machine shop for $20. Yes, it's a Boyer Schultz and it's a nice precision brand and I'm sure if I spent the time to restore it and grind it in, it could be a great tool. But for me, it's so much more valuable as a nice heavy magnetic chuck. You can see how convenient that is to hold my material while I grind it because all I'm really doing here is scuffing up the mill scale so it will accept the patina that I'm going to be putting on it later. I'm not doing anything crazy, but what's nice is this would be really hard for me to do using a conventional vise, and I wouldn't want this stuff just bouncing around the table because the pieces are so light that they really need to be held in something in order to be ground. Once I'm done over on the downdraft table, I go over to my 2x72 grinder, and I just round over the corners a little bit and clean up some of the burrs. I want these to be nice and smooth because they're going to be having a you know glass slide in between them, so I want to make sure there's no sharp edges, and that everything is really nice and easy to touch. Once it all gets covered with the lacquer I'm gonna put on it, it's also gonna help smooth things out. Now the fitment of all this and the kind of dimensions of everything needs to be really precise so that it's all symmetrical. So I actually start in the center and I use some of my Sigmund squares to block everything up. And then I use some one, two, three blocks as clamps to hold everything down. Now, the way that I'm gonna to have to weld this angle on is sort of upside down in the conventional sense. And I'm gonna put a little diagram up on the screen now. So you can see there's really not a lot of area for me to weld to, just that little one inch section. And what I'm concerned with is that the ends of that angle is gonna bend down towards the one inch tube. So I made a wooden block that is exactly the right size, the three quarters that I was looking for. And I actually rounded the edges so it would fit the angle iron perfect. And then I'm using some one, two, three blocks to clamp it down in place. Now, if I were to not do this clamping, the sort of longer legs of this angle iron would surely warp uh, away from the material. And if these were all crooked, it would look really terrible when you look down the side of this. The whole point of this is to be kind of a sleek and elegant shelf with this glass on top. So I wanna make sure everything is super symmetrical and just looks perfect. Now the hardest part here was getting my little wooden block out because I made everything super tight, but with a brass hammer and some of my other metal blocks, I was able to knock it out. Now again, why I started in the center is because I need this to look symmetrical. Now if I'm off with my measurements or if my steel's off by just the tiniest bit and I start on one side, that you know error will compound as I go. So I move from the center out in either direction and I'm using my squares as I go to make sure that everything stays nice and true. You can see each piece only gets basically two inches of weld, so there isn't much to do there. And I don't want to put any weld on the inside just because it would be very difficult to get to it. Again, between every single one, I have to really spend some time with a brass hammer to knock out that block. But eventually this process gets a little faster, and in the end I wound up with something that was perfectly symmetrical on either side. Over here, I had a little bit of a gap in between my angle and my wood. So when I was welding it, the wood caught on fire, which can cause a little bit of porosity if you do get a small fire when you're using wood jigs. But as long as you're careful, you can usually get it out pretty quickly and it won't ruin the weld. And here, because I had that gap, a little bit of my weld kind of undercut through. So I used a die grinder to make it so that I can actually get my spacer block out. Honestly, the most time consuming part of this was getting that spacer out. 
you can see I'm using my squares, my Sigmund squares on now the edge and face of my table to hold my clamps so that I can use my one, two, three blocks to keep anything from possibly warping. Whenever you introduce this level of heat to a welded project on only one side, you can expect there to be warping of the tube in general. And you'll see when I let this out of the clamp, my 16 gauge frame got a pretty bad warp in it. But luckily, because it is 16 gauge, it's going to be relatively easy for me to get it out just using the clamps on my table. And I'll show you how I do that now. So there could have been other alternatives for me to get this warp out. I could have put some heat on the opposite side. Um, I could have pre-cambered it when I welded it. But I really wanted to make sure everything stayed nice and flat. And I knew that if it did warp, I would be able to get it out using minimal effort because the 16 gauge material is relatively thin. Now you can see I have these up on one, two, three blocks and I'm checking it with a straight edge and then just using my regular Sigmund clamps to push this material down evenly and give it a bend in the other direction. It's pretty amazing how good the tolerance on this fixture table is that I'm able to get this much clamping pressure and you can see that the actual stem of the clamps is barely moving when I put this much downward pressure on, which if you ever use the fixture table with bad tolerances, you know that those clamps get crazy. So with all that pressing and moving around, I was able to get it nice and flat. And you can see that it's definitely going to be much better now that I corrected it. Now I head back over to the grinding booth to just kind of score up this material and get a little bit of the surface prepped for the patina. Now the patina that I'm using is going to be Black Magic by Sculpt Nouveau, which is actually recommended to go on a sandblasted piece of material. Now you can kind of see my sandblaster in the corner of this clip, but you can definitely tell that it's not big enough to fit this piece of material. So what I like to do is just do a run across all surfaces with a flap disc. In this case, this is a 60 grit or an 80 grit. I'm not 100% sure. And I'm just rounding everything over and just running all over the surfaces so that I'm giving my material some tooth so that when I put that patina on there, it all looks consistent. If you have ground corners and then unground faces and you use patina, a lot of times you'll see a pretty big difference between those two surfaces. So everything gets a very light grind. Now to avoid getting this patina on my table, I just put down a piece of MDF and I can start degreasing again using that WD-40 brand Easy Pod degreaser, just cleaning everything off, making sure that there's no lingering dust or anything else on there so that when I put the uh, patina on there, it all does it very evenly. Now, patinaing metal, especially something complicated like this with many different small parts, can be really, really tricky, very time consuming, and honestly, it's incredibly annoying. Uh, I would have much rather painted this shelf, but in the client's home where this is going, there's actually some other liquor shelves that I built years ago which have a black patina on them. So the whole purpose is that all of these steel and glass shelves match. Now, this particular Patina is my favorite. It's from Sculpt Nouveau. It's called Black Magic. It's by far the easiest to apply and get a consistent look, but there are a lot of rules when you're using it. You know, you can't use any acetones or thinners when you're cleaning. It has to just be a water-based degreaser. And then when you're applying it, they really don't want it to get, and they don't want it to dry. They want it to stay wet. And then you have to neutralize it with just straight water. So you'll notice that I have a small water bottle and in that small water bottle is just water. So I'm spraying on the patina, I'm rubbing it in, then I'm going immediately back with water to stop the reaction. This patina is essentially a controlled rusting of the metal. So if you let it go for too long or you let it really eat in, it will cause a stain in your material and it'll rust far worse than the patina and uh, you won't be happy. So if you're going to do any patinaing, I'm going to leave a link to the Sculpt Nouveau product, products that I use in the description of this video do some test samples and really try to get some experience with this before you do it on a client project or a large project. The larger the project, the harder it is to apply the patina to it evenly, but you can see over time, it really develops a beautiful, rich, blackened look. And it's a really nice natural finish that you can tell was applied by hand when you're all done, just because you can see so much more variation in it than you would with a paint. Now I let it dry overnight and then the next day I'm going to be using some Total Boat Halcyon Clear which is a water-based marine spar varnish and I'm going to be putting this on uh, three coats giving myself ample time between the coats to dry and I'm applying it with a foam brush. Total Boat Halcyon Clear is my favorite finish for wood or metal. Uh, it is the easiest to work with. It wets out beautifully. It works on wood and metal and I've really just had a great 
experience using it. Uh, you've seen me use it on other projects if you've watched any of my other videos, but a lot of people don't think to use a marine product like this on metal. And I will tell you that over patina, once it's properly dried, as long as you clean it well, this will really help it last a lot longer and it'll keep it from corroding, even just from the humidity in the air. A lot of people get frustrated when they use patinas on their projects for the first time because they don't realize if they don't do a good top coat of either a wax or a varnish that it's likely going to continue to corrode and continue to rust from the humidity in someone's home or especially outside. There you can see the piece of glass. It is three eighths with a beveled edge. I got it from Dulles Glass and Mirror in Texas. Uh, they are a great resource for nice thick glass uh, that you can get in a custom size in really short amount of time. I'll put a link to their website in the description of this video as well. I'm not affiliated with them, but I've really uh, enjoyed finding them. Getting glass and mirror from them has really helped my workflow and helped my clients get exactly what they need. Now, the way I'm going to mount this is by actually putting 3 16 holes through the outside edge of the steel and then a larger hole that the head of the screw can poke through so that when you install this, you don't actually see the heads of the screws at all. With that done, I'm able to sort of just clean things up. I use a little bit of Sharpie to clean up that shiny edge where my drill was and then an air compressor to blow it off. And I can bring this over to the client's house for install. I didn't film the install, but you can see how it looks now that it's all done in the client's house, hanging up with those wine glasses and those antique bottles. I'm really pleased with how this came out. I'm really happy with the patina and I think the glass looks really sharp. So thank you to WD40 Brand for sponsoring this video. And if you're interested in any of the products I use or any of the tools, check the link down below. Check me out on Instagram right here and I hope to see you on the next one.